Hi, this is Chris Follette, and I'm here with San Francisco Dance Film Festival. Um, with me, our guest today is Morgan Bullock of Riverdance. Hi, Morgan. How are you? Hi, Chris. I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. Um, so I know you are an Irish dancer, but um, can you tell us a little bit about your dance background, what you started with, and then how did you land with Irish dancing? Yeah, so I started dancing when I was three. My parents kind of just put me into dance classes. And so I haven't really known any different my whole life. Um, I started off with ballet and tap dancing. And then I started adding more classes with jazz, hip hop, lyrical. And I always just enjoyed dancing for an audience. I was always performing for my family or anyone who would pay attention. Um, but nothing really stuck the way that Irish dancing did when I eventually found out about it when I was 10 years old um, at a dress rehearsal actually for a recital um, for the dance school where I was taking classes. It's just a local dance school and they started offering Irish dance classes. And when I saw Irish dancing for the first time, it was like nothing I'd ever seen before. There were aspects of it that I thought looked like tap dancing. And then there were other parts of it that I thought looked almost like ballet. So it was just like, it was a crazy thing for me to see as a 10 year old, um, seeing a dance form for the first time. So um, I instantly fell in love with it. And I immediately was like, I wanna sign up for classes and my parents were so supportive. At first they were like, okay, that's kind of weird. That's kind of different from what you're already doing. Um, but then they were like, okay, yeah, you could sign up for classes. And I'm sure they thought that it was gonna be just like something that I tried out and didn't really like, but it really stuck. And yeah, I'm still doing it today. <laughs> Amazing. So can you can you explain, um, you said they're, it's similar to ballet, similar to tap. What are the things you know that you found um, connect them all? And what are the, some of the things that are just vastly different with Irish dancing? Um, I think that with any dance form that focuses on um, like percussive beats and rhythms that are being made by the dancer themselves, there are those similarities, obviously. The fact that with tap dancing and with Irish dancing, we're kind of making music with our feet, which is so cool. Um, but with Irish dancing, there's a whole different look and style to it. Whereas tap dancing, it's like free upper body movement and you don't really have to cross your feet. Um, you don't have to be turned out at all times. Um, and with Irish dancing, it's more focused on that kind of technique that keeps it, um, some would say rigid, but um, just the way that it is, it's that traditional form of Irish dancing where your arms are down and there's little to no upper body movement. Um, and, you know, it's all pretty much the waist down doing all the work. And um, the, I think the biggest difference is with the styles is just that crossing and turn, turn out feet that um, we really focus on in Irish dancing. Um, but there are so many similarities. And even in the show that I'm touring with now, River Dance, like we have tap dancers and Irish dancers. And it's so cool to see, um, you know, the Irish dancers and tap dancers dancing together on stage and to see those similarities and those differences just right next to each other. You're with River Dance now. You're on tour. You're in uh, Syracuse, New York at the moment. Yes. Yes, yes. Cool. Um, so how would our viewers or listeners be most familiar with you and uh, you Irish dancing? Um, the viewers and listeners might be familiar with my TikTok videos um, that I started posting at the start of the pandemic. Um, it's kind of just this crazy snowball that took off um, after I posted a video just for fun. Um, and it got attention from people I didn't expect it to get attention from, like the prime minister of Ireland and Beyonce's mom, like just yes. so many people. <laughs> yeah, because you were dancing to Megan, Megan the Stallion. Yeah, Megan the oh. Stallion, the Savage remix with Beyonce. Yeah. Um, and it had just come out and I was like, I love this and I want to dance to it. And really all I know how to do at this point is Irish dance, <laughs> so. 
Um, yeah, it was kind of just a combination of serendipity. <laughs> and then here I am. <laughs> Amazing. And that caught the eye of Riverdance, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so they contacted you and and how did how did that happen? Yeah, so it was kind of just another crazy surprise um, for me. I've always loved Riverdance. I did the Riverdance summer school in 2017 where a, a week-long program where you learn the whole show. Um, but I was too young to be in the show at the time. So I kind of just did it for fun and just purely because I love the show and it was a great experience. But um, fast forward to after I posted this video in 2020, um, Porik Moyles, the director of Riverdance, reached out and he actually surprised me on live radio and invited me to perform with the cast. So that was an amazing surprise and a life changing, you know, thing that happened to me. And um, yeah, so now I'm on my second tour with Riverdance, which is insane to say still. It's pretty surreal. How did you um, get involved with the film Steps of Freedom? It was kind of just brought to my attention that this film was being made and that my name was brought up in the process of thinking of, you know, who's who in Irish dance, which is such an honor to be, you know, named among people like Jean Butler and all of these- Michael Flatley. Dancers. Yeah, Michael Flatley, like so many dancers who took part in this film who, you know, it's, it's a, an amazing honor to be a part of it. and. Obviously, when I heard that this film was being made and what it was about, about the roots of not just Irish dance, but other forms of dance and, you know, that cultural exchange and what it was delving into, um, I obviously was like, yes, I want to be a part of it. Um, so I went out to New York and filmed and it was such a great experience being part of the documentary and then watching it after it was all put together and seeing all of the separate interviews and all of the people who were involved. Um, it's such an amazing film and I feel just so grateful to be a part of it. So um, one of the opening shots of Steps of Freedom is you in New York, Irish dancing on a pallet in an intersection. Um, what do you think is the um, message of you there Irish dancing from the beginning of this film. Yes, so that opening scene was so much fun to film, first of all, I loved that. And I love um, the director's choice to put that as, as one of the opening scenes because I do think that it is, you know, unexpected for the viewer who might be thinking um, they're just gonna see maybe traditional Irish dancing, maybe someone who, you know, red hair, um, dancing in a long dress and that couldn't be further from what I was doing. I was wearing leggings and just like in the streets of New York dancing. I was actually dancing to Doja Cat, fun fact. Yeah. So even more shocking. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, I think it does just, you know, it shows that Irish dancing isn't just that picture that people might have on St. Patrick's Day specifically, like green, redhead, you know. It, it's anything it's me it's you know anyone can be an Irish dancer and I think that is the message that comes across that you know um I'm opening this film pretty much that delves into the culture and Irish dancing there it is a product of the cultural exchange that is Irish dancing and all these different forms of dance that are touched on and talked about in the film totally totally I mean I saw in Steps of Freedom um that the origins of Irish dancing, you know, um, are similar to flamenco as well as um, Indian dancing Qatar and, you know, maybe are derived from some African dances and that's all because of trading and just how how things were throughout history. So um, it's it's really cool, the the ties through all of that. And, and, um, and I also saw that it was um, derived out of oppression originally. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's such an amazing thing about Irish dancing is that, you know, through the years it's evolved as a dance form and the fact that it's been able to survive through, you know, 
the attempts to basically eradicate it as a dance form really is a true, it's been a true test and it really just shows how strong the roots are. And like you said, it is a dance form born out of oppression and cultural exchange, which I think is such a beautiful thing. And all of those different forms of dance that you've mentioned, the fact that they exist and evolve through cultural exchange is something that I think is to be celebrated by everyone, which is why, you know, Irish dancers can look like me and look like anyone. And I think that's just an amazing part of Irish dancing. In the competitive world, and have you have you been met with people that um, obviously embrace you and are so just like inspired to see you on stage? What have you been met with? Um, I've been met with so much support and so much um, just love from the Irish dance community. Um, I think that the best thing about the Irish dancing community is how open and accepting of everyone um, it is. There's obviously, you know, going to be singular people who have whatever other opinions, but as a whole, the Irish dance community has been so supportive. Um, and we're kind of just all rooting for each other because of, you know, it's kind of a niche thing to be doing for a lot of us, especially in America, where in, when you say like you're an Irish dancer, people might have a different idea of what Irish dancing is. It's not as, you know, known as ballet or other dance forms that people, you know, might have even done themselves. And you will get like the odd person here and there who's like, oh, I took Irish dancing classes when I was younger. And it's like, no way. And it's, you know, you always know exactly who they learned the Irish dancing from because it's like oh. everyone knows everyone. <laughs> but um, it's, it's just such a tight knit community, even though it is very big and it's grown even in the time that I've been a part of it. Um, but everyone is just so supportive. And so, you know, we're all just rooting for each other and wanting everyone to do well. Um, and, you know, even my, my biggest competition when I was competing were like my best friends. So it's a great community to be a part of. Cool. Do you have um, any inspirations like amongst you or any Irish dancers that you looked up to or wanted to, you know, that um, influenced you? Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. I think Jean Butler is one of my greatest inspirations of all time. Um, being the original leading lady of river dance. Um, I just think she's the epitome of strength and grace and what it means to be a female Irish dancer. And, um, of course now being part of river dance, I have an even greater appreciation for her as a performer and what she had to do. You know, she was the blueprint for <laughs> this show as a woman so um she is just such a huge inspiration for me and I feel so fortunate to have been able to work with her in Steps of Freedom and to get to know her on a personal level I feel so so incredibly grateful to you know have someone who I've looked up to my whole life as an Irish dancer be sort of like a mentor type a, a friend to me so um she's really definitely special. a huge one and you know even in, in the competitive world a lot of the dancers that I looked up to when I was starting to compete I'm now dancing on stage with here um in river dance so it's just been a huge full circle moment for me and I'm very lucky to be surrounded by so many amazing inspirational dancers so there's another interesting scene in the film, um, which are two groups of dancers um, look, looking like they're competing with each other. And one looks like they're doing uh, Irish dancing and the other is tap. Um, and I just wanted to know what your thoughts on that. I mean, they're both rooted in percussion and um, maybe one is dancing on a certain beat while the other one's doing the overlaying of the rhythm. Um, what are What are your thoughts on that? Um, I love any scene that is, you know, touching on the similarities and difference between tap dancing and Irish dancing. It's, a, you know, it's a common scene in the Irish dance world uh, because of river dance has trading taps, which is my favorite part of the show personally. Um, and I think that it's just, a, it's a great scene to be included. And I was fortunate enough to be on set for that. So it was amazing to watch them um, kind of freestyle a lot of that, which is insane. There's such talented dancers in that scene. Um, and, 
yeah, I think it just really shows like in a very clear way that cultural exchange and how Irish dancing and tap dancing are very similar, but the ways that they're different as well and how, you know, they really accompany each other in a beautiful way. Um, and yeah, I just think it's an, it's an amazing scene and, you know, that cultural exchange is more or less what happened when the Irish immigrated to the U.S. and there were tap dancers already here. Um, and, you know, that mixture of the slaves and Irish people who came over um, and how they interacted and how the dance forms evolved and how they became even more similar. And um, it, I, I think that scene just really does a great job of showing how that might have gone without even really using words, which I think is, you know, it's amazing because it, you don't have to speak any specific language to understand what's happening in that scene. And I think that's what's so beautiful about it. Thank you so much, Morgan. Um, it was wonderful having you. Um, once again, the film is out May 13th, uh, Steps of Freedom, and we hope to see you there. Thank you, Morgan. Thanks so much, Chris. Thank you.